أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين السلام عليكم dear viewers um, thank you for being uh, with us you are watching Imam Hussein TV inshallah I would like to introduce you to a brand new series regarding the life of Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman Allah ta'ala faraj al-sharif may Allah hasten his reappearance inshallah for the um, series I shall be your host Ali Burji and with us uh, we have an esteemed and respected scholar Sayyid Ali Khalkhali Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa Firstly I'd like to thank you for joining us for this um, extremely important um, series a topic regarding the life of Imam Sahib al-Asr was zaman and uh, inshallah through the series we'd like to as well um, discuss as, apart from who Imam al-Zaman is and a bit more about his life and biography we'd like also to um, enter discussion uh, regarding his responsibilities in this world, his role, um, his his function as um, a representative of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also would like to uh, dwell into a discussion to understand more uh, about us as the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen and regarding every Mu'minin, Mu'mina, her role or his role and responsibility towards the Imam of their time, inshallah. Um, so by this, I'd like you to, inshallah, um, give us an introduction. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma ajjil waliyik al-faraj. Waj'alna min a'wani wa ansari wa al-mustashhadin bayna yadayh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran states, Hayyassu al-lazhin ya'alamun wa al-lazhin la ya'alamun. A question for us a thought of reflection and an awakening that are those who have knowledge and are those who do not have knowledge of the same level are on par that there needs to be a true comparison between someone who seeks knowledge and gains knowledge understand has awareness and that who does not we have been encouraged many times through the Holy Quran and through the prophetic narrations and the traditions to seek knowledge, to increase in ilm. So much so that we have in the Holy Prophetic narration that اطلبوا العلم من المهدي إلى اللحد Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. As in seek knowledge throughout your time, throughout your life, at every age, one should seek knowledge. Uh, sometimes we find that people think that seeking knowledge is only till university, only till college, and that's it, once I've finished, once I've got my degree, I should burn all my notes and everything, and that's it, I don't need to open a book anymore. Rather, this is completely in contrast to uh, the teachings of the Holy Prophet who states, continue seeking knowledge. Until, Ilal, until your last moments in your life, you should be continuing seeking knowledge. Hence, you find our ulama, our scholars, our researchers, there's no such thing as retiring from the age of, the retirement age of studying or seeking knowledge. We'll continue and continue to seek knowledge. With regards to seeking knowledge, Sayyidina, I just wanted to ask you, um, is it addressed... Um, with regards to the importance of the type of knowledge that one must prioritize in seeking. As you've mentioned with regards to a, a student who might have um, graduated from university, he may be seeking knowledge to improve you know, um, his lifestyle and to <coughs> um, inshallah get a job to be able to provide for the, you know, his family and himself. With regards to the differences between uh, an general knowledge and religious knowledge, is, is the and anywhere where we can understand if, if it's prioritized, where we must constantly seek uh, religious and spiritual knowledge, or we in general? have a uh, recitation in Dua al-Asr, the Dua of Salat al-Asr, that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahum ni'audhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' 
and will I seek refuge from anything of knowledge that may not be of beneficial beneficence to me no benefit for me we are recommended to seek knowledge in various branches of knowledge knowledge which is religious knowledge in terms of that knowledge that is going to be khayrun li fi dunya wal akhira knowledge which will benefit me for this world and the akhira knowledge which is essential knowledge that i need to gain and understand and gain awareness of and knowledge which is recommended knowledge for example for me to gain knowledge about various scientific fields various mathematics uh, branches of maths these are recommended and one is recommended to uh, seek various uh, forms of knowledge of course there is a difference of that essential knowledge that one should seek knowledge and interestingly with the ahadith that we have seeking knowledge is not something just for males we have the hadith that states that talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslima seeking knowledge is compulsory mandatory one should perform every, on upon every male and uh, female and the third hadith that i uh, would like to uh, share is that the holy prophet states that atlabu al ilm walaw kana fasin seek knowledge even if it's even if it were in china in the sense that the holy prophet is encouraging mankind that if it means that you need to travel to seek knowledge then do so if it means that you need to travel far in order to seek knowledge then do so you are encouraged to do so hence when it comes to seeking knowledge one should persevere one may at first find it difficult to seek knowledge one at first may not understand the text that they read one at first may think that this is actually not making sense to me let me give up straight away yeah. and throw it all away but we have in the hadith that states that you should persevere and persevere and persevere until you truly achieve success i remember one of our teachers used to say that no one was born with uh, benching a uh, hundred kilos for example or carrying all of those weights correct but they will start with the lower weights the lower weights and slowly slowly they'll be able to master lifting all the other weights so you always way. start from small Ahsantum. in everything in your life Ahsantum. and practice makes perfect perfect and you find that some state that you should also persevere and never give up like the story of Sakaki Sakaki he found out the importance of seeking knowledge at a late age late age he realized that at a later age he realized that I need to seek knowledge so what did he do he said I want to go back to school to madrasa he was an elderly gentleman he went to school and he wanted to learn and seek knowledge when he was in school the teacher asked him to learn a particular Arabic sentence he went home to learn that sentence came back and every student started to recite that Arabic sentence with the correct Nahu and with the correct uh, sort of every, all of the correct Arabic grammar and all the, all the pronunciations and Sakaki made a very very bad mistake and the other students thought that was a huge mistake what are you saying mm. he said the sentence very wrong sakaki got upset with his own self that i sakaki at this elderly age said something very wrong uh, i was unable to learn a sentence in arabic and he f he left the city that he was in he went to the top of the mountains he was really upset i was trying to learn and i have given up now until he saw something in the mountains that changed his life what was it he saw he was witnessing drops of water pouring onto a rock and he was counting one two three four until he counted till 70 drops 
The seventieth drop, the rock split into two. Subhanallah. And he thought to himself, mm. at first attempt didn't succeed. Second, third, until seventy. Perseverance, as you Perseverance. mentioned. Perseverance. So Sakaki said, I what will return to school. Even if I did not succeed the first time, I will continue to try and try and try and persevere until I am successful. And this is what we should recommend and encourage one another. Never give up from seeking knowledge. Continue. And this is an important obligation and recommendation and duty upon every single one of us to continue to seek knowledge as much as possible. Ahsantum Sayyidina. Now, with regards to knowledge, interestingly, um, when it comes especially to um, um, religious uh, subjects or even for the personal spiritual um, development of a human being, main objective of increasing our knowledge is to increase our awareness and also to have a more secure and confident direction to where we want to head towards. And here in this discussion, we bring uh, as well the topic of ma'rifa. And we understand that there is a differentiation between ilm, knowledge, and ma'rifa. And inshallah, if you can elaborate further on this, what is exactly the difference between ilm, knowledge, and ma'rifa? And ma'rifa can be translated into various different me English meanings, uh, such as awareness, recognition, um, knowing, and much more. Indeed, uh, there is a very beautiful uh, commentary given explaining the difference between ilm and ma'rifa. That's one who has ilm may not necessarily have ma'rifa of that thing. But one who has ma'rifa, in addition to the ilm, to the knowledge that he has of that thing, he has an extra awareness and recognition of that topic, of that subject. So therefore, ma'rifah is the extra knowledge, but more than just saying knowledge, because again, sometimes when we want to translate something into English or translate the word ma'rifah, it may lose its actual value. Ma'rifah is more than just knowledge, more than just ilm, is awareness, is recognition, understanding. And there is an extreme importance in addition to having knowledge is to have ma'rifah. Can ma'rifah be achieved through a combination of uh, different practices? Like for example, um, uh, acquiring knowledge and constant reflection upon yourself and the creation in general. Or are there any other means to uh, achieve that level? where you can actually say that I've come to the point where I can claim that you know, I'm Arif, for example. Yeah, so that can be one of the ways. So Ma'rifa is an, is a, is an extra feeling, awareness and understanding. Uh, being a specialist, an expert, uh, feeling that true knowledge that you have gained. Uh, and one is recommended in addition to Ilm is to have ma'rifah of that topic that, that we have. And we'll discuss this, the importance of ma'rifah, uh, that recognition that we need to have, and how much we have been encouraged in addition to seeking knowledge in Islamic principles, our duties and responsibilities to have ma'rifah. That's why the hadith states that din ma'rifatuh. The first thing in religion is to have true ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kamalud deen, perfection in your religion and deen, is to have ma'rif of it. Ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why one who has no ma'rif in their life, it's like they are missing an essential element mm. within their lives, within their day-to-day -day practices, within their day-to-day -day duties and uh, responsibilities. Or uh, that's man who came to the Holy Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, Allimni gharaib al-deen, gharaib al-ilm. Oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me all those uh, 
uh, peculiar, special things about knowledge and religion and everything, all ins and outs. And the Holy Prophet said, وَمَا فَعَلْتَ بِرَأْسِ الْعِلْمِ And what have you understood about the peak and the fountainhead of knowledge for you to ask about those uh, peculiar things? So he asked, so what is رَأْسُ الْعِلْمِ? And the Holy Prophet responds, أَن تَعْرِفَ اللَّهُ حَقًا عَرِفَتِهِ That you have the true ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa so ta'ala. So that would be Tawheed for example? Ahsantum. And that Tawheed, which is the first usul of deen, mm. which is the principle of our religion, is the first thing that we need to recognize. The essence that the, the of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, as we state in the, and recite in the Holy Quran. And this is something that a whole deen is based upon, the ma'arifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of our deen relates to the ma'arifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'arifah of the Holy Prophet, ma'arifah of the Imams, Ma'rif of uh, the Day of Judgment, Ma'rif of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Adal of Allah starts with the essence of uh, Tawheed and Ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ah, Santum Sayyidina. Inshallah, before we continue further on um, with uh, regarding to today's uh, topic, uh, we'd like to um, stop for a short break. So, dear viewers, please do stay tuned with us at Imam Hussein TV and we'll be right back shortly for the um, remaining discussion. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. السلام عليك يا حجة الله في أرض السلام عليك يا أين الله في خلق السلام
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Uh, you are watching uh, us on Imam Hussein TV. Inshallah, we'll continue our discussion on uh, today's uh, topic, which is uh, discussing the necessity of Imam Zaman's Sharif recognition. So we began with an introduction into our first episode of this series with the importance of knowledge. And we've uh, expanded between uh, discussing the difference between knowledge and ma'rifah. And inshallah, now we want to go into the main um, subject of this episode, with, which is the necessity of um, recognizing the Imam of our time. Now, um, the way we'd like to get into it is we'd like to f firstly put a few points of the importance um, a mu'min should recognize, of course, Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning Tawheed, and after that, should recognize and acknowledge his apostles, his emissaries, the Holy Prophets, alayhum salam. And especially for us, Ethna Ashari Shias, we have the concept of Imamiyyah and Imamat and how crucial it is. And uh, I just wanted to get start with that, and also, uh, inshallah. From there on, we can discuss about the significance of Imam's recognition. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran states in Surah Bani Israel, uh, chapter 17, verse 7 of the Holy Quran, that uh, ندعو كل أناس بإمامية. Sorry, chapter uh, Surah Bani Israel, chapter verse, uh, chapter. Surah Bani Israel, verse 71. Yeah, chapter that 17, Bani Israel. Chapter right. 17. That day, day being in understanding of the day of Qiyamah. Qiyamah, the day of Qiyamah. Um, incidentally, in the Holy Quran, many times day has been mentioned. Mm -hmm. Day, Yawmul Deen, Yawmul Hasra, Yawmul Nadama. Reminder, Yawmul Hisab about the day of judgment. And how to prepare for it. And we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, On that day, every single person shall be called with their imam. Every nation, every person shall be called forth with their imam. Today we ask one another. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in Tawheed. And I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his ultimate justice, infinite justice, sent prophets to guide mankind. And I believe that he sent after the prophets successors and imams. So who is my imam today? Who is the imam of mine today? Hence the Holy Prophet in a unanimously agreed hadith narration would state, Mamat. وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْ إِمَامَ زَمَانِهِ مَا تَمِيتَةَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ One who dies without having knowledge or ma'rifah وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْ Without having ma'rifah Recognition, awareness, understanding of the imam of his time dies, the death of Jahiliyyah, which was the period before Islam, period of Jahiliyyah, period of ignorance, period of misguidance, that kind of death. That today, if I have everything in my life, but I do not have ma'rif of the Imam of my time, it is as if I am living the life of Jahiliyyah, Jahiliyyah ignorance. ignorance. And which, um, as you've mentioned as well, that this. Um, a verse from the Holy Quran and this famous hadith both accepted from both main um, uh, Islamic school of thought it's very it's a heavy heavy statement it, it just shows the extreme significance of recognition of the Imam of your time now for the sake of argument with regards to the verse one may come and say may playing the devil's advocate here one may come and say that prophets were Imams because the transliteration of Imam is a leader, is a guide. 
One may argue that during the time of Anbiya, the Holy Prophet والسلام, they were the Imams of their people. And during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was the Imam of his people. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam being Khatam al Nabiyyin, he is the seal of the prophets, the last of the messengers. Someone may come and argue that Rasulullah is the Imam of the time from now until Yawm al Qiyamah. Now, in order to reply back as a as a Ithna Ashari Shia, I cannot really indulge in this discussion without discussing Imamat, correct? Without discussing the importance of Amir al Mu'minin and, and the Imams after him, correct? So that is an important discussion that to discuss about after the Holy Prophet, that the Holy Prophet upon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would discuss the importance of Wilaya, Imama, Khilafa, that to succeed him. And we have a hadith that says, La taqlul ard that this earth will, shall never be void of a hujjah of Allah, of a one who shall be the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who shall be the prophet or imam of Allah uh, towards mankind, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards uh, mankind. Yes, uh, previously those who were the prophets of the time would have been the understanding of the imam of the time. Today, who is my imam of my time today? Mm. Who is the one that I today connect as the Imam of my time? And uh, in addition to the question, we have a statement that during the time of the 11th Imam, a man came to the 11th Imam, Imam al Askar and said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, there is this hadith from the Holy Prophet, Mamat wa lam ni'arif Imam al Matamita tam jahiliya. So who is the Imam after you who we shall follow as the Imam of the time so that we avoid being of those who are Jahiliya? The Imam pointed towards his young son and said, Ibni, my son, the 12th Imam, and said, he shall be the Imam of the time. He is the Imam of the time. Mamat walam ya'arifu Whoever dies without have ma'rifa, without having ma'rifa of him, dies a death of an ignorant jahiliya. Subhanallah. Ahsantum Sayyidina. Now inshallah, um, we'd like to devote every episode the last 10 minutes, inshallah, so our viewers are aware, uh, would like to devote the last 10 minutes of each episode to a, a responsibility or obligation we have as believers towards the Imam of our time. And since we've opened uh, the introduction episode, we opened it with regards to the importance of knowledge and ma'arifah, inshallah, we'd like to end it with ma'arifah as well as being one of the key responsibility and obligation towards the Imam of our time. We are going through very testing and challenging and difficult times in this time and era. A time that many will question us about the 12th Imam. A time that many have lack of knowledge and understanding and recognition of the 12th Imam. And before everything, it's awakening that if I want to increase my recognition of the 12th Imam, I need to increase my understanding of Imama. Before that, I need to understand prophethood. And before that, I need to increase my recognition and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First responsibility and duty today is to increase our ma'rifah. Ma'rifa is not superficial knowledge. If I would say to someone, what's your ma'rifa of the 12th Imam? And he just says, yes, I know him as the 12th Imam. I know his name and I know his titles. That is very superficial. What are the qualities you know of him? What are the specialities of the 12th Imam? You know? What ahadith do you know of the 12th Imam? What are the actions of the 12th Imam that you implement in your life today? 
How much do you show love towards the Twelfth Imam today? How much do you know of him? Awareness of him, understanding of him. Hence, Imam al Sadiq informed a noble companion by the name of Zurara that, oh Zurara, during the time of the Twelfth Imam is a challenging time, as a time of tests and trials and tribulations. During that time, one, a true believer, a true mu'min, should regularly, regularly recite this dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase their ma'rifah. We will, inshallah, recite this dua together. That he states the sixth Imam, Allahumma arrifni nafsak. Fa innaka lam tu'arrifni nafsak lam a'rif nabi. Wallah, I ask you to increase my ma'rif of you. For if I have no ma'rif of my Lord, then I have no ma'rif and awareness and recognition of the Prophet, Rasulullah, Khatamul Anbiya, Sayyidul Anbiya, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Allahumma arrifni nabiyyak, fa innaka illam tu'arrifni nabiyyak, lam a'rif hujjatak. Oh Allah increase my recognition and awareness of the Holy Prophet. For if I have no recognition of him, then I have no recognition of the Hujjah of Allah, the 12th Imam today. Oh Allah, Allahumma arrifni hujjatak, fa innaka illam tu'arrifni hujjatak, wa lan tu'an deeni. Oh Allah, Increase my hujja, increase my recognition of the hujja. For if I do not have any recognition, ma'rif of the hujja of Allah today, I have gone astray from the deen. Every day we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِمُ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا ضَالِينَ I do not wish to be on the path of those with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath is upon. And I do not wish to be on the path of those who are dhalim, who are on the path which is astray. Oh Allah, increase my ma'rifah of the 12th Imam. Let me increase my recognition. Let me work hard and persevere and seek knowledge and recognition and understanding of the 12th Imam so that I do not be of those who are dhalim and Astray, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our ma'rifa as our first duty and responsibility. Let's increase our ma'rifa of the Imam. Ahsantum Sayyidina, inshallah. Thank you very much uh, for your wise words and for sharing the knowledge. Inshallah, we've all uh, benefited from it. Uh, we've come to the uh, end of uh, this episode. I'd like to thank you once again on behalf of Imam Hussein TV for making time out of your busy schedule to join us and inshallah uh, produce the series that uh, we ourselves will benefit and inshallah our viewers as well. Dear viewers, uh, once again I'd like to thank you for being with us and watching us at Imam Hussein TV. Please do join us next time for um, uh, episode number two which will be discussing uh, Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif in the light of the Holy Quran and other um, holy scriptures. Ahsan. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Biya ta javanam Derukh nishanam Ke in zendegani Wafai nadaram این زندگانی وفای ندارم یا